Well, I'm R. Stevie Moore. I'm generally known as one of the main pioneers of low fidelity, one man band, home recording. I've been recording for 50 something years and I've made 400 albums in my home. And now more R. Stevie Moore. R. Stevie Moore, prolific. Mr. R. Stevie Moore. R. Stevie Moore. Yes, I am R. Stevie Moore. Back when I was a younger child, I started my own idea of home recording by myself. My father was a bass player doing all the country sessions with all the stars of Nashville. I had access to tape recorders in my teenage basement, and I was a huge rock and roll fan. and absorbed all of these influences and started messing around with writing songs and making my own music. Do you record in the privacy of your own home, is mm -hmm. that correct? That's right. Now how do you do that? Well, late 60s is when I started making my little albums. I overdub all the instruments myself. I play bass and guitars and keyboards and percussion and vocals. I got really good at it. I could do seven, eight, nine, ten overdubs, and you'd still hear the very first thing that I used. Did you invent home recording? Of course not. But I took it to another level long before it was customary. I've probably written about four or five thousand songs. They came out effortlessly. I would compile the most recent songs. I wouldn't pick and choose the best ones and throw the worst ones on the floor. And that's been my aesthetic all along. It's like everything is released, warts and all, because bad music is brilliant. It's a diary of sound. Everybody that has ever been a record collector loves to turn their pals on to the obscure. Why do you hear this one? I mean, I do have that reputation. Talking Heads and B-52s, they were all fans of mine. Naturally, a lot of these big artists have found my music just word of mouth, but they never saw me because I was the home hermit. I know what I'm doing. I keep trying. I keep doing more of it. I build up the quantity without thinking about starting over at the beginning to improve the quality. I hardly ever performed, and I was a bedroom guy. It was always get home, put the headphones on, and then I would work for hours and hours. In 2010, things started to explode. Out of nowhere, suddenly I was in a band and touring the world. I was playing hard rock shows, big festivals and tiny dives. It was incredible. My career really started taking off a little too late in life. Often people say, I can't see how you've done this same thing all this time without falling through the, the trap. You know, by avoiding the mainstream, nobody is gonna dare tell me what I can and can't do. It feels so good to have that integrity intact. I'm proud of all that, and I'm also still a little kid. 